Hello, hello. Welcome to the Kevin Davani Connection Show. I'm here with Has McCook. Has, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having us on again. Always love coming on. It's really a pleasure to have you on my show. It's always a pleasure because you you uh, do the you know the the detailed work when it comes to analysis of whatever energy efficiency of Bitcoin mining, uh, all this CO2 fud, um, the energy fud. It's uh, so I can only you know applaud you for all the for all the work you've done so far. So has. Uh, could you give us a brief overview in Australia? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> well, Australia is a is a is a, an interesting case. Basically, just like every or not like everywhere else in the world, uh, but uh, similar to to other you know countries that sort of are under a, a federal system, uh, where whereby you have like you know several states that kind of do their own thing, uh, with an overarching you know federal government you know, that is, you know, responsible for, you know, other uh, particular things. Uh, so just like in America, like you've got your red states and blue states or your, your Vax passport states and like, you know, your, your quote unquote free states that don't have the passports and all that kind of stuff. Uh, 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 it's the same in Australia in that we've like uh, uh, got a contrast, but the contrast isn't like that extreme. It's universal, like lockdown, but like different flavors of lockdown in different states. Uh, you know, based on based on case rates. Now in Australia, like uh, we've gone uh, we've gone over the top to make sure, like uh, you know, we we keep the the deaths uh, uh, as low as possible. And uh, you know, as a as a result in Australia, so I'm in the. Uh, in the 30 to 39 age uh, bracket uh, in Australia, only six males between the ages of 30 and 39 died of COVID. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six males between 30 and 39 and four females. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, overall, you know, a thousand uh, a thousand deaths uh, in return for that 98 percent of breast cancer screenings got cancelled last year uh how many deaths is just that going to be uh cancers that might have been detected in last year's test stayed a year undetected or a year and a half or whatever it was uh so like uh so we've only, we've kept the death the covid deaths low by like you know choking society uh, but we've done uh, we've done a lot of like uh, you know secondary damage. But at least you know we've we've kept the deaths uh, uh, you know low. Uh, you know if uh, I think our our death rate is zero point seven people per hundred thousand. So it's uh, it's yeah. uh, second lowest only to New Zealand. I think New Zealand all of COVID might have had like twenty fatalities or something. Yeah. Their 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 like mortality rate was I think point four point oh four yeah per hundred thousand or something. Mm -hmm. You know when I've been listening to the experts testimonials uh, under the Corona Investigative Committee in Germany under the with the German lawyer Rainer Fulmich and the, all the other experts and lawyers, it's a uh, now you know global movement right now and they've been like. Um, I think uh, talking to like at least 150 experts around the world globally, like the most renowned uh, expert there are. And one thing is sure, COVID is not about health. I mean, this is what people need to understand. It's not about health. It's about, you know, totally about something totally else. So the reason I titled, you know, this episode, Bitcoin against global tyranny and everything else and corruption is that, you know, we need to look at the systemic problems, the structural uh, causes. And um, so, you know, since I'm a politically illiterate, I don't watch like many other probably Bitcoiners and other people, you know, in, in this space, we don't, we, have, we haven't been watching mainstream and I'm not really interested in how things work or politically. So I didn't know that there is like different prime ministers in Australia. So I had to look it up. So I thought there's one prime minister, right? Uh, yeah, so, 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 there's, so there's one prime minister and every state has a premier. So just like in America, like there's a president, but every state has a governor. 
in like uh, in uh, in Westminster uh, in the Westminster Parliament system. So basically, England, Canada, Australia, uh, New Zealand. Well, I'm not sure about New Zealand actually. Uh, England, Canada, Australia, uh, uh, and and specifically in relation to provinces and states like you have in Australia. Uh, in every uh, province in Canada, you know, there's a there's a premier, uh, there's a Canadian prime minister, and the head of the state is the monarch uh, of England. Uh, you know, same uh, you know same goes uh, same goes for us here in Australia. Very similar uh, to our Canadian friends. Who are also going insane uh, with those lockdowns. So basically, uh, if uh, if like the Western world wants a, like a barometer of where they're going to be in you know in in three to six months' time, uh, look to look to uh, probably Victoria in Australia uh, and uh, and uh, uh, you know I think uh, I think it's Quebec that's gone uh, most crazy uh, in Canada. So, like I said, in Australia, there's there's diff there's you know varying levels, varying varying grades of tyranny, uh, to you know you know that you know a manageable level of like tyranny, oh, to it's a just, uh, it's terrible. to a, it's not like uniform, like, like no no, it's on a it's basically on a state by state basis, but it's not like a contrast. Whereas like in America, you have like free states that are just going hard. If you want freedom, come here, mm -hmm. and like other states are like you know the opposite. In Australia, it's just different levels of tyranny okay you, know, you have lower tyranny states yeah. yeah and then you've got like victoria which so uh, uh, melbourne is the capital of uh, the state of victoria and like melbourne is the longest locked down city in the world i think since corona started they've locked down for something stupid like 267 days uh -huh. So okay. they part. So they passed like 267 or something like a few weeks ago to break the record, mm -hmm. and that's why there was there's been a lot of these like uh, protests you've seen on TV. So a lot of the protests, the riots, that was all down like in Melbourne. Uh, so in Sydney we have like just a different level of like tyranny. You know, like no one's allowed to like. Uh, uh, but like tyranny is like tyranny is still tyranny it's it's sort of like you know i suppose the the pregnancy analogy like you can't be like you know half pregnant you're either pregnant or not pregnant mm -hmm. uh, so in sydney like basically like unless you're like a critical like worker like you you, you basically can't do anything at all uh, and also like uh, if you are a critical worker you need a vaccine to be able to do anything at all uh, then uh, on monday uh, my state, oh sorry, uh, not Monday tomorrow, uh, or Monday today rather, uh, Monday uh, next week, uh, they'll be opening, you know, uh, lots of things up for like double vaxxed people, because we'll be hitting like 70% double vax rate, then at 80% uh, double vax rate, you know, they'll, uh, you know, open up like a, a few more other things, like to the double vaxxed. And then, like, uh, when it's 90% double vaccinated, believe it or not, life goes back to normal. No vaccines, no QRs, no sign-ins, nothing. Okay, so you're serious? Now, you're the premier that made that promise, now like, the premier that made that promise, yeah. uh, 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 resigned uh, for a corruption investigation two days ago. So uh, I've lost faith that life will go back to normal like on December the 1st. Like why the hell would you open a corruption investigation on a politician you've known has been corrupt for a very long time? Like a week before like people are meant to start getting their freedoms back. Like it just makes me feel like uh, very uneasy that the new premier will be, you know, pro lockdown. Uh, but we'll just have to see how it goes. Like with, with politics... Uh, really, it's just uh, whichever way the wind blows. Really, uh, like uh, you just have to, uh, uh, you know, literally, you you cannot believe any of these people's you know promises when they say, yeah, you know, this day your life's going to go back to normal. But like un until I until I see it happen, until I'm like given evidence of it, uh, uh, I uh, I will not trust 
Uh, you know, do not trust, do not ever yeah, trust these as people. The just, goes, uh, as the saying goes, has, you know, uh, you know, when a politician lies, when he opens his mouth or moves his lips or something like that. So, you know, politics is politics. It's, it's like, it's inherently corrupt. It's inherently uh, deceptive. Uh, it's, it's inherently about cheating. It's her- inherently about uh, systemic theft. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it is what it is. So can you like go over like, uh, what are you like? What do you see like in the in the in the coming months? I mean, do do you see like uh, Australia like um, going into the footsteps of, of of Israel? Like you know, double jab, double jabbed. You know, it's not valid anymore. You need a third and fourth, otherwise, you know, you're gonna expire with your with your with your COVID pass or whatever. And like uh, you know, based on my interpretation of the former New South Wales Premier's promise, ninety percent vax, you're done. That's it. Life's going back to normal. If the over 60s want boosters, we have heaps of boosters. So do you think that was the the objective and the intention behind the whole corruption, uh, you know, story that, um, you know, this is probably just the tip of the iceberg. It's I'm sure I'm totally. No, no, this is this is basic vanilla political corruption. Uh, The premier at the time hooking up her boyfriend with grants for his like electorate. Like. My this point. was a this was a huge story like a year and two years ago like uh, then we had the massive bushfires because you got to remember like 2020 for australia was a horrifying year like we had our worst fires in history and then we had a, the worst floods in like a hundred years and then we had a week off and then we had corona and, uh, and because she did such a good job throughout the, the fires, like she was very popular and like we all said, you know, poor lady, you know, she's with some bastard boyfriend and like, you know, like, you know, we, we forgive her, we let her go. And like, that was the last we heard of that, you know, two years ago. And now like, as of last week, that's it. Like it's on again, the, the anti-corruption like uh, commission mm-hmm. uh, is, uh, has opened an investigation. So uh uh, so we'll uh, so we'll see how we go. So she was, uh, I'd say she was uh, liberty loving, uh, into the extent that like uh, she waited until it became politically untenable to like not lock down. Uh-huh. Uh, you don't understand the media frenzy like over one death. So one, so the first person died of this second wave. So at that point, there was maybe three hundred cases. At that point, maybe doing 40 to 50 a day. And we had our first death. And it's like this death, this is the blood on Gladys's hands for not locking down immediately. You know, there's going to be lives and it's her fault. And like we told her to lock down a month ago when we only had one case. Uh, and uh, and uh, in contrast, Melbourne had, you know, one case like three weeks ago. They locked everything down and now their cases are out of control and they have like 1,600 cases a day. And they've been in strict, like strict lockdown, yeah. heavily policed lockdown. Like uh, you saw like uh, how the police rocked up. Yeah, it was, like, it was those just, riots. Yeah, those weren't regular yeah, cops. It's like dope, uh, it's... Uh, like th- those guys looked, not all of them. Some of them were just just dressed in that uniform, uh-huh. but a lot of them looked special forces. Like they looked like they yeah. belonged in such a uniform. Do you think uh, some of them are foreigners? Like sort of, you know, like with NATO, they're planning to do to sort of hire foreign. I mean, I would call them mercenaries, but you know, they're just getting paid to do that. You know, just look, the, I'm uh, I'm I'm not an expert, like uh, you know, like on the law with uh, these things, or like uh, or or labor and employment law regarding these things. Yeah, because usually police are governed by unions. Like they don't let you hire scabs. They don't let you hire contract. It's got to be union muscle. <laughs> uh, but like uh, there there are like. Uh, uh, particular departments of like uh, uh, the police force of the armed forces that are just better trained than other divisions like elite divisions and and a lot of like uh, you know people uh, like uh, you know policing civilians look like they came from these elite divisions and like this is like this is not a good direction to go yeah 
but, but for the society brutality is just mind-boggling i mean i couldn't just watch it. it's just it just i thought you know this is this must be a movie you know or you know a really bad movie so um Okay, has I want to before I forget? Uh, can we talk about like? Uh, do you hear anything about adverse reactions of the, you know sort of the um, after you know getting the the, the so called vaccinations or injections yeah. or um, deaths because they're underreported in the United States. There are estimates that the that the number of re of reported adverse reactions or deaths are are like a fraction of a fraction. It's like one to maximum ten percent are reported to the VERS system in America. So it's uh, so there. There are experts who say the, the the real estimates are at least a half a million deaths uh, after getting double jab. I mean, do you hear anything about the adverse reactions or deaths or anything? So, uh, so for me, like uh, like everyone else, like I can talk about like my personal circle. So of like the I don't know 30, 40 people I like know who took the vax. I'd say like seven or eight of them, nothing happened to him. Everybody else got sick for a day at least. At least, or two two days. At, like the worst one probably got uh, uh, got a rash for like the first dose and the second dose. But like, you know, that's like... like People think it's normal. All of them, People like all of them just... At, yeah, all of them just said, yes. You know, I was sick for two days. I'm like, mate, what if they want you to have a boost every three months? You're going to get sick for two days every three months now forever? But almost all of them like you know of the 40 like 30 they were sick for a day or two they're like all right it's just a little bit of mild fever uh but like uh I, in my personal personal circle uh i don't know anyone with with very bad adverse reaction uh uh, uh yet but again like uh, uh this is a matter of like uh, uh risk and risk management and risk quantification and latent so was, and, and latent yeah. time because you know just because it doesn't you don't feel anything after a few days weeks or months it doesn't mean that it could take years until whatever this gene therapy it's not a vaccine for that's crisis. also very true but let's pretend it's not and let's just go on like the reactions like uh, uh we have so let's talk just australia uh so like uh in my age bracket uh you know there'd probably be 30 to 39 there'd probably be something like i don't know six seven hundred thousand people out of those seven hundred thousand like twenty thousand of us caught it so it's twenty thousand in in seven hundred twenty and seven hundred uh one in seventy of us caught it so like you know less than two percent and of that less than two percent that caught it uh ten of us died 10 in 24,000. So one in 10,000. Okay. Of one in 10,000, though, that you're talking about the 10 in 12,000, but that 12,000, we've already determined it's 1.4%. Uh -huh. So you're going at, you know, one in 1,000 of that one in 70. So it's one in 700,000 for somebody. 30 to 39 in Australia die of COVID. That's the stats. They're telling me vaccine uh, will push that out to one in a million. And there's only like a one in 5 million chance like I'll die of the vaccine. But there's probably like a 60% chance I'll get sick for a day. If you look at those stats, me, someone one in 700,000. But if you then have a look at the like 80, 70, 80, 90 year old stats, like it's horrifying. You tell them, you guys, you need to take the vaccine just in case it's helpful. Uh, because the unvaxxed, like uh, the chances are like a hot, like uh, uh, it's, uh, it's not guaranteed death, but I'd say like a 7% chance of death is like guaranteed death. Like if you're in a stadium and 7% of the people die in the stadium, there's like a lot of dead people around yeah it's like it's that's big odds yeah uh so if the so if the if the vaccine helps them push their stats out to like one in a thousand or one in ten thousand like yes worth the risk okay uh, so i'm uh, i'm generally speaking quite pro-vax but determinedly anti-mandate 
and like I re- I refuse to get a a, a vaccine uh, if it's uh, if it's mandated. Uh, but I do believe, you know, it like because uh, like uh, like COVID nineteen will be here f- forever, and I do believe that like uh, uh, within the next two three years, uh, market forces will either develop a vaccine that actually works, or a prophylactic or a treatment that actually works. So I'll take that one. It would have been tested uh, thoroughly. Uh, everything like will be properly, you know. Uh, uh, researched and vetted, yeah. And like, uh, until then, don't force me to do anything. Yeah. I'll take. I know my chances. I'll take my chances. Yeah, you know that's a topic that deserves uh, special attention. Um, especially, I guess it's the same. You know, in Australia, uh, when it comes to uh, when are you sort of declared as unvaccinated? And in United States in U- European Union, it's pretty much the same thing. It's uh, if you get the jab, if you get the whatever the in- injection, and you die within the first 14 days, you are un- you are you know you are sort of uh, yeah you're officially unvaccinated. <laughs> so, um, and and so you know the thing is we don't know anything. We don't know anything I mean, about about the real stats and the long term consequences. You know they just developed uh, uh, a gene therapy uh, a vaccine within. What was it like six months? I don't even know, you know, how long it really took. Usually, it takes like eight to twelve years to, to develop, if you call it vac- vaccine, uh, but it's not a vaccine. So I'm uh, I'm happy for people to roll to roll the dice, mm-hmm. like if they want to. But like, why do I have to roll the dice as well? Like, mm-hmm. like uh, so that's uh, that's basically. Uh, I'm uh, I'm neither here nor there. I'm uh, I've always been like uh, vaxxed up. Uh, I've got like uh, like I always uh, I always get like I even get my flu shots uh, Seriously? every really? year. Did it help? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I haven't had like bad flu in like a good like ten fifteen years. I catch the flu still like every year. Yeah, uh, but like it hasn't like I haven't caught it bad. Like for like, basically I caught it really bad in my early twenties and yeah. I said, I'm never like, I'm never going to catch the flu again. Okay. Like, uh, and I imagine like, that's what COVID would have felt like it would have been, it's a life changing hit of the flu for like, you know, five to 10% of people that catch it like a flu so bad. Like you just never want to get flu again. Yeah. Uh, uh, so so for that reason, I take the flu shot that people have been taking for 70 years. And like, it's rare. It's so people still get side effects, uh, but like they're, they're very rare. Whereas if you read the things like, uh, like uh, getting fever is a side effect. Uh, but I don't think anyone like ever reports things like this. Yeah, that's that's uh, the problem. People just don't report it, and even in this case, you know, with the with the COVID uh, so called vaccines, they people just just don't report, it and they should actually be doing pre pre analysis or pre examination of the blood and afterwards to see, you know, what are the whatever thom- thrombocytes or whatever you know disorder you have uh, physi- physiologically and organically and whatever. So and then people just don't report it, and and the the doctors they go to they're already biased. You know, because they, and the doctor whom you got your shot from, he would never tell you, you know, there might be something wrong with you. So you, you actually have to go to an independent laboratory and, 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 and a doctor to, to make those examinations. But, but there really is like there is there is zero science. Zero, <laughs> like yeah. There is no science like uh, I laughed my ass off. So like I was watching uh, uh, I was watching the, the, the rugby yesterday, the rugby league. The, the 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 final was on so the only time i ever watch tv is if i'm like I'm, I'm watching sport and like i have to deal you know with uh with ads so i saw the new ads about like the the laws that are going to be coming into place uh after the 11th of october so when we're 70 percent vaxxed so uh uh usually if uh, if you're a close contact of uh, somebody who catches the virus you have to quarantine at home for 14 days, no matter what, if your result is negative or positive. If you've been a close contact of a confirmed case, it's 14 day home quarantine. Now, as of October the 11th, if you're a close contact of a person who's caught it, but is double vaxxed, 
your quarantine time is only seven days. <laughs> That's so irrational, everything. But anyway, <laughs> uh, you know, instead of <laughs> it's so mind boggling. You know, and, and and before, you know, I was gonna say, you know, you said you you've been taking your flu shot. I mean, you know, I've been I've been learning a lot about you know prevention and uh, strengthen the immune system. You know, hardly you you never hear about that. Like like how do you how do you strengthen your immune system? There was a time you know where you got censored. Even Joe Rogan talked about it. I mean, uh, taking like vitamin vitamin D three K two zinc uh, amino acids whatever trace elements uh, minerals. This is what what actually you know really boosts and strengthens your immune system, but I hardly you know hear anybody even you know even the, the even the ethical experts you know I don't hear them much talking about it from time from time to time maybe some of them but the 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 best way to stay healthy is uh, is uh, is really uh, hard work. So uh, uh, so uh, like hard work tends to drive uh, the the. Uh, the habits uh, to, to you know that you need to do to keep you working hard uh, so uh, you know uh, put your body into your work exercise eat healthily you know get get outdoors holistic uh, you'll, yep. you'll find the healthiest people in the world are usually you know the, yep. the carpenters and roofers and yeah. like, uh, you know people that, people that, that work nice. outside yeah work hard and yeah. also you know eat well and sleep well uh, so uh, we can definitely take a, a, you know, take a leaf, take a page out of their book. Yeah. So has let's talk about the, the you know this dystopian, uh, really surreal dystopian uh, 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 agenda that's been being planned by the WEF and their you know their the whole alliance of Klaus Schwab and the monetary the planned great reset a monetary reset. How do you see things play along? I mean, how do you see Bitcoin? Uh, do you see, do you really see a billion people by 2024, 20, 25 um, adopting Bitcoin and that sort of that uproots this whole system and and finally we can we can we can uh, you know uh, break 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 ourselves from the bondages? Yeah, it's uh, like uh, like I'm sure you've seen that meme of you know the politician standing on a plank. You know, over the cliff with his, you know, pulpit and like pointing, you know, at the crowd and you know all these people just standing on the plank, keeping it steady. You know, or like you just walk off the plank, and uh, and that's basically it. So it's it's there if people want it. So we're thirteen years in, uh, and we're at around one hundred and twenty million people. Uh, uh, own Bitcoin, uh, according to like the latest estimates, I think by uh, Crypto.com. So it took us twelve years, uh, uh, you know, to get here. Twelve to a hundred. So yeah, I could I could see like I could see a ten x in five years. So maybe not twenty four, maybe closer to twenty six. I could see, uh, you know, uh, I could see like. Uh, the infrastructure uh, has been built out to accommodate a billion people. So right now, uh, you know, a lot of Bitcoin's value really is its potential and like what it promises to be. Uh, right now, the infrastructure does not exist for a billion people to use Bitcoin. But, uh, but by the time even a billion people come around to thinking, you know, let's get into Bitcoin, like the infrastructure will probably be uh, built. Like Lightning, I'd say you'd have to say it's prime time. Yeah, I mean, look at the Lightning development; it's 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 mind-boggling. I mean, and look, and and when were we first fiddling around with that that Casa node and passing around like the Lightning torch? Like that's been two years. Uh, and like everyone was saying, like this is going to take Lightning, you know, eighteen months to two years, like before it starts hitting prime time. Uh, so like you know they weren't like far off and it's enough to accommodate a very small country. Uh, but like there's a, there's a big uh, uptake of Chivo wallet in El Salvador, very big, apparently like 40% of the population has downloaded the app. Yeah. I think 3 million people are already using it. So, yeah. So uh, yeah, this is the benefit of a, of an airdrop, get some, uh, get yeah. some free money. So look, they haven't had the best start. And that was my original fear for El Salvador. So a lot of people asked me like about if I was excited for it. 
And like, I went on the record and I said, I worry about it a lot. Like I, I just, I worry that it's too early for them. You know, that it's just too volatile. And basically like, uh, I think Bitcoin day, when, when was it exactly? It's been almost a month now. Yeah, it was a like the, the 7th of September or, some, or yeah. something, 7th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it's been a month now. And I don't know if you have a look at the, like the daily chart for the past month, it must have like a 10% range every single day. Like uh, they've had the, the perfect uh, introduction to Bitcoin. <laughs> so, uh, so that's, I was just a bit worried about that, but like, then I actually, I properly had a look into like, uh, you know, how Chivo worked and it's basically moving USD yeah, uh, you know, over over strike, and if you want to keep it in 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 lightning, like you can. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but with that said, it still gives a very very instant and final way to pay each other, you know, for less than nothing. Whether you want to do it, you know, in in dollar denomination or Bitcoin denomination. Mm -hmm. So, how bullish are you? Do you think more small countries, like in South America, Latin America, where other countries are gonna like unexpectedly, you know, <laughs> do the, uh, pretty much the same thing as El Salvador? Uh, uh, I don't think we can say unexpectedly anymore. Now we wait for the second one to make their announcement. And that's basically how it's going to be. The second one to make their announcement might surprise us, but we're not going to be surprised that a second country has done it. I agree. Small country, maybe uh, somewhere South America, maybe Pacific Island somewhere, maybe somewhere yeah, like yeah. Tonga. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, or or any of like the 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 you know really small Pacific Island nations. Like I think there's more Tongans in Australia than there are in Tonga, for example. Really. Tonga, Tonga, Tonga is you know uh, uh, like a you know small small economy. Really, yeah. there's only you know so many. Like opportunities, like uh, you know, for the for the youth. Uh, so uh, a lot, uh, you know, born and raised, uh, you know, in Australia, great rugby players. Yeah, they are. Yeah, I've heard fantastic of. rugby players. Lord Fazito, yeah, he's a he's a great fan of that. So uh, so has what else makes you makes you really excited and bullish? I mean, uh, with Bitcoin mining, I mean, even Iran lifted the uh, the Bitcoin mining. I mean, even though you know it's very oppressive over there and. You know, it's not really uh, an open uh, free market. I mean, we, we don't have a free market anyway, global. But, but what, 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 what do you see on the horizon? What makes you really so, uh, I uh, I think uh, uh, we're going to, like, uh, uh, you know, on the Bitcoin side at least, like, just keep seeing, like, uh, more of the same, uh, you know, competition, uh, you know, producing, you know, uh, you know better products and better prices, uh, for people. So, uh, again, two years ago when we were like, you know, fiddling around, uh, you know, with our first like, uh, uh, nodes, who would have thought like you'd get like to where we are, uh, now where you have like such wallet competition that you've got things like Spectre and, and Sparrow. Yeah. Uh, and look at, Umbra. Yeah, look at Umbra yeah. on Bitcoin machines. I mean, it's just, a, a, a you know, ready to go idiot proof, uh, you know, full node. You just plug it in, and there you go. And you have all the applications in the self updating. But I mean, the price. We can discuss the price. I mean, I'm sure you're doing mass production. But, but yeah, in in terms of development, like uh, like uh, has it? There's like, uh, have you ever heard of this thing uh, called Taproot? <laughs> so I think everyone's like forgotten how like actually meaningful, like. Uh, uh, so I like to measure. I like to like value things in terms of like uh, like usefulness uh so like with bitcoin there's several things that make it useful and attract a a individual like utility premium so like the store of value function is very useful so it's got like a market premium the ability to transact very useful so on and so forth uh uh, uh you know uh, got a premium and you know every little thing like has its own weight, number of users. And now a big one is actual is throughput. So right now the theoretical maximum throughput is, uh, you know, seven transactions per second. Uh, uh, 
uh, functionally closer to about like three and a half, three point seven when the mempool is completely full. Uh, you know, in the future, if everyone is using like a taproot, we might see ten or eleven instead of seven. So all of a sudden, the transaction utility premium has increased by fifty percent because you're getting fifty percent more transactions transactions through. And even though fifty percent more is like nothing in the scheme of things, it's not going to be enough for the one billion. It's barely even enough for one million, let alone a billion. Uh, 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 by that time, like lightning will be lightning, and you know, and thunder on top of lightning, or whatever oh, they, yeah, you know, yeah, or whatever they come up with. Yeah, uh, you'll be very easily able to handle the billions, mm -hmm. and you know. Uh, you know, anyone like having children now, I'd say, if they're, uh, uh, you know, unless they're getting, you know, Bitcoin from you as their parents on chain, uh, they will never, uh, they will probably never interact with layer one Bitcoin in their life. Yeah, I don't see like 20, 30 the year 2030 onwards, like no one will use layer one Bitcoin. Yeah. Except like, you know, exchanges mm -hmm. and like whales and people opening and closing channels. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's basically it. So like, uh, you know, a baby born today, like getting, you know, their first allowance uh, will be getting, you know, uh, being conservative will be receiving sats on the lightning network. <laughs> Uh, because even, even lightning might become, you know, too expensive for sending around one cent. It very well, it very well may. Yeah. If you want to send us, if you want to send a sat and the fee is 0.7 of a sat, then, you know, lightning on then, you know, thunder or whatever it is like, you know, you can, you can play with micro sats, you know, on that layer. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Bitcoin, unless you're moving. You know, if it's the year 2030, if you're not moving a million bucks at least, uh, like you don't really need to use or see layer one Bitcoin. It's just going to get prettier and prettier and more abstract. Just like the email address was just some monstrosity when it first, first came out, like a weird, you know, string. And then eventually, uh, you know, 1995, me as a little boy, nine-year-old boy, made a hotmail account had easy to use email yeah uh, but like but like that people were emailing in the late 70s it's just you know you had to be like a computer programmer yeah yeah people don't understand exponential uh, evolution or development and and we're going to see like uh, by order of magnitude evolution we've never seen before so um so has uh let's let's go back to the you know to original topic um uh, bitcoin against global uh tyranny and corruption and and everything else that you know what is systemic and structurally uh causing all this suffering and pain and and theft um do you see this global monetary open permissionless unconfiscatable uh, censorship resistant instantaneous monetary network with all these layers uh evolving so fast that it will deroot this criminal global system of you know of theft of corruption of, of oppression of a tyranny dictatorship and everything else you know that's causing been causing so much pain suffering and uh and and well slavery bitcoin is the gun with the silver bullet right it fixes everything we just have to wanna we just want to need to want to pick up the gun that's it Bitcoin's already derooted everything. Like it's there, the silver bullet is there, the gun's on the table. If we want like, like to shoot tyranny, like the gun is there. We either use it or we don't use it. Uh, but like, uh, you know, like uh, it's uh, it's already there and alive and well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, And that's... Like, uh, if you ask me what the what the risks to Bitcoin are, like, obviously people say, you know, oh, there's, you know, there's financial risk and there's, you know, so-and-so risk and there's regulatory risk and blah, blah, blah risk. Like, I think the only risk to Bitcoin is that, like, maybe 
just, people just don't want it. Maybe, maybe they like the tyranny. Uh, now, for a lot of people, you you have to give the benefit of the doubt, like to the majority. They just don't know that Bitcoin is the gun yet. Uh, but there are a lot of people that that know and just don't want to pick it up. So maybe guns are, is a bad uh, uh, analogy to use for a, you know a non-violent way uh, to uproot. But basically, what I'm meant to really say is that Bitcoin is like just a tool. Yeah. Like by itself, it's not going to do anything for us. Mm -hmm. We, it's us that have to use this tool. Exactly. Yeah. That's it's all. us that has to, we have to want it. We will have to want to use this tool. Yeah. And that's why I always say Bitcoin is always, will always be the so-called black market money. Yeah. And look, and it is the tool for the job. Like if you want to get a nail into a piece of wood, what do you use? A jigsaw? That's not the right tool for the job. You need a hammer. Like if you want to deroute this corruption in the monetary system, you need a good tool. Like you need the best tool ever conceived and it's been conceived and it's growing. It's been built upon and it will be built upon. Uh, like you just have to want it. It really is as simple as that. That's the mechanics. It's supply and demand. If you just increase demand for Bitcoin, whether that's increase your own demand for it or, or help increase it through things like, you know, uh, like education initiatives and podcasts, uh, you know, they're, they're talking your friends and families, you know, heads off uh, about it. Like uh, you increase demand for Bitcoin, the supply isn't going anywhere. Uh, and as it gets uh, bigger and bigger and bigger and more and more irresistible, uh, like Bitcoin just becomes boss. Yeah. And there's this, you know, like there are already politicians Bitcoin, all which, over the world. Yeah. Like shilling Bitcoin. And you have an SEC commissioner that uh, I don't know. I, I don't know about Gensley yet. I've watched a lot of his YouTube uh, content heaps. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, guy could be a maxi. Uh, and like, uh, he is intent. Like, uh, I don't see, you know, for longer than 18 months or so that, you know, uh, most securities, sorry, most shit coins. Uh, are declared uh, securities obviously probably start with the low-hanging fruit easy ones like to litigate but i'd say like you know uh by the by the end of the decade like uh bitcoin will be the last non-security uh digital asset like standing bitcoin yeah. and you know did six you, or seven others yeah did, did you see that short uh, clip or interview with uh between um with raul paul and and uh michael saylor <laughs> Where Michael yes. really had to like you know educate him like this is this is illegal you know it's unethical it's like you know we have to tell a grown up man who lives on a Cayman island you know uh, uh, probably for the sake of tax evasion um, that this is something first of all it's unethical this this comes first I think before it is before before you, you look, know, it's illegal look, here's here's how I see it so I was talking with a with a bunch of my friends uh, the other day. Uh, they're, they're, they're Bitcoin owners, uh, but they're not Bitcoiners, but they like their risky like investments. So a couple of them invest in like penny mining prospecting stocks, right? Where they pick up uh, a stock, you know, for a cent, they read the prospectus, you know, the director of operations is some PhD in geology or blah, 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 blah. They say, you know, we're going to drill, you know, for gold. And like, if we find gold, everyone's going to be a millionaire. Uh, your share price is going to go through the roof. If we don't find gold, we can prove what we did. We have our paperwork. We're registered on the stock exchange. And like, you can't sue us. You know what you're investing in. Uh, so basically, uh, not all shit coins are going to die if they're deemed securities. The ones that actually do something, if there are any that do something, can register, put out a prospectus, and go compete yeah. fair and square. Yeah. So I always yeah. like I also tell people like, what's the difference? So mm. like I don't like to use like shit coins in this analogy because maybe using Bitcoin is a stronger analogy, even uh, you know, or not analogy example. What's the difference between uh, a game of roulette and Bitcoin? 
In roulette, I have fixed odds. One in 38. Bitcoin. <laughs> don't know what my odds are. Now, what shit coins are telling you is you have a one in 10,000 chance of making 5,000 X on this shit coin. Yeah. You know, that's, uh, that should be illegal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cause uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, yeah, what, what, you know, yes. what stands out for me is the unethical part because, you know, it's the people who are getting dumped on. And, it, it, you know, it's, of course, the stupidity, the naivete, the, I don't know, the, the, uh, the, the this, this high time preference of, of it's a gambling. It's a sort of a gambling. It's but, but, the th but the thing is, the securities law, like, is there. So that, you know, possibly fake doctor of geology doesn't say he's going to drill and then <laughs> skips the country. Yeah. Like, you know, there's laws protecting uh our security owners from behavior like that like the stock standard consumer protections for all securities so like you have a protection if you're sitting if you're buying a share no matter how dodgy the company you're buying if it's a publicly listed share you have protections uh and like i don't think that's a bad thing like uh like yeah like uh i sound like a cheerleader for the government here like uh but like i wish there was a there was a a, a better way uh, for like, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, because a lot of these rug pulls aren't a repeat game. Like there's no threat to reputation. You rug once, as long as you rug big, you never have to do it again. There's no repeat game. Uh, but if there was a repeat game amongst all these scammers, the market would eventually like self-regulate. And, you know, like it's probably uh, good that something like that uh, uh, usually happens, but like uh, shit coins are the worst and the, of the worst of financial cancer Yeah. on steroids. Exactly. On crack. Like yeah. people are being ruined. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Do you think people like are going to go to prison? It's too accessible. Like I know yeah. you have to let people touch the stove, but there comes a point you can't have every single person in the world with burnt fingers. While, while scammers are just laughing and have become like the new like ruling class because yeah. they've just managed to scam everybody. Yeah. So, so I'm going to say, you know, I'm, let's just pretend there is still, uh, which, you know, I, I have I've totally lost hope in this uh, separation of powers, uh, you know, the judicial, executive and legislative branches. And there should be uh, not only the COVID, this whole COVID uh, hysteria and, 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 and fraud and corruption, uh, there should be criminal proceedings uh, uh, up to the, you know, Nuremberg trial number two, uh, 2.0 going on at international court of, uh, in, uh, of, of criminal court in, uh, in Hague. Um, but let's just, let's just pretend there is a separation of power. There is still some kind of balance. Do you think there's, there'll be criminal proceedings, criminal investigations uh, going on? Uh, Doubtful. So symbolic one one uh, one criminal proceeding i see happening is uh, to the poor uh, to the poor executive c-suite of uh, of evergrand oh yeah, uh, yeah. escape uh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah so uh uh you know i think there'll be a bailout uh but because of moral hazard uh you know maybe some serious possibly grave trouble uh for the directors <laughs> so an example has to be set and like there's no way china is going to let uh, uh evergrand uh uh implode i think there'll be uh there'll be very big damage uh to global markets yeah uh, let's uh, let's see how we go yeah there's a guy and uh, yeah i heard an interview with uh, what's what's his name i forgot his name i i think he was talking with um uh gammon um uh, and he said that the shadow banking system or the sh shadow credit system in in china is about 50 trillion now i know i'm not an expert on macro or all these you know, intricacies but it would be interesting very intrigued to know you know what kind of chain reaction of effects is going to have on the global you know financial system probably just yeah, look, think like the can can keep getting kicked mm -hmm. as long as the people keep letting it get kicked. And it's, it is a, like a gradually then like suddenly like proposition. So, uh, so that's basically it. Yeah. As long as, as long as like we keep increasing. So it's just like, uh, like anything in life, like even ideologies, 
and you know like and like uh, ways of thought and all of that like you can map them out as sort of like competing businesses or competing business models so like uh you know you've got this authoritarian you know business model that's got a market cap of 800 trillion or whatever it is and then you got this bitcoin freedom business model you know it's got its market cap of like you know one trillion but hey, if that market cap goes 20 50 100 trillion uh if you think about it, it probably still isn't even upsetting the balance of power uh you know uh correctly but but as it grows the balance of power uh, dramatically swings and like i said there's already politicians and regulators in various countries uh that are that are bitcoin uh, uh supporters and for now even if they're supporting shit coins like at least it's something uh because i'm very confident that like uh, the shit coins will be deemed uh, uh securities and i agree with michael saylor that once all shit coins are deemed securities it's probably the best thing that will ever happen to ethereum by the way Oh really? Okay. Uh, because uh, the security holders, uh, like uh, now, they have like voting and uh, cash flow rights conferred to them as uh -huh. as security holders of Ethereum. Yeah. Good and point. as a and, and as a as a legal, regulated, centralized entity, they can probably come up with a fantastic centralized corporate blockchain solution. Yeah, it's centralized. It runs on Ethereum. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. all the other shit coins will die because they're yeah, useless. Like they are securities that do nothing. So therefore, they're like they're worth zero. Uh -huh. Ethereum will probably be very valuable. So I don't know what Ethereum's valued at now, market cap, maybe 300 billion, something like this. I can see it being a three, four, five, six hundred billion dollar like corporation. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but yeah, at that point, you know, Bitcoin is money. It's like it's not a corporation. Ethereum shares will be priced in Bitcoin. Uh, but it'll but that that'll be Ethereum. It'll be a centralized blockchain that does like enterprise stuff. If it's still alive by then, if there's not like a, 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 a layer three, like Bitcoin solution, this is what I see. But like, so a, all of that kind of stuff. So for some, like becoming a security will be very good for them mm -hmm. because like institutions and stuff can anyone can go buy a security. Well, anyone can buy a shitcoin now. Actually, an institution really has difficulties buying a shitcoin, by the way, uh, based on like certain charters and like risk profile and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so not everyone has access to shit uh, to shitcoins, mainly VCs and poor mums and dads. And the VCs get them very early when they're still worth shit, and uh, and dump them on you, uh, you know, when they're when they're worth something. Yeah. And yeah, you know, you mentioned the third layer on Bitcoin's protocol. So you know, this this, this so eventually, is, like, like, like again, like I rationally. take, a, like I take the Alan Farrington school of thought as well. Like, I'm not against like DeFi. I love DeFi. Like, Hoddle Hoddle is fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's Bitcoin DeFi. That's peer to peer lending, is it not? Yeah, I mean, I have no experience. Uh, with that. Uh, but like, uh, look, it's a great multi sig escrow experience peer-to-peer -peer lending fantastic uh don't recommend anyone try it the price is still way too volatile yeah, to be dealing say. with loans in that yeah but as a proof of concept it's bitcoin DeFi. it's peer-to-peer -peer lending yeah so you think and that it works perfectly it so long as bitcoin doesn't tank 40 percent in a day and like it happens like you know at least once every two years that happens like it's not a low risk thing it can happen like whenever, but eventually that'll be very low risk and, and that kind of Bitcoin DeFi would be great. But like this incantation of DeFi, like Alan Farrington says, like it's not decentralized and it's not even finance. Like it's nothing. It is the worst of the worst of legacy finance in like digital form on maximum, maximum leverage. Rehypothecated on rehypothecated on rehypothecated, yeah. taken from this chain, staked there, uh, 
new tokens created out of thin air from yeah, a, like you know, that state of the moving been around, like, about uh, has you know this whole rehabilitation it should be it should be like totally legal and criminally you know prosecuted so but, a lot of people say look it has to be free and that's the free market and if people want to gamble like the people want to gamble like i don't want scammers to become rich off stupid people well, they say well yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the the stupid and their money are quickly p- parted well like at least let this stupid person go buy a Lambo. At least, you know, that money has gone to a business, not to a fucking scammer, a business that's paid taxes and wages and all of this kind of stuff. You know, go buy dumb shit instead of, you know, DeFi that like, uh... but yeah, unfortunately, uh, like it doesn't have to be made illegal. It just has to like uh, be brought in line with traditional investments. Bitcoin is currently almost perfectly in line with traditional commodity investment. Yeah. In terms of KYC, AML, like in terms of like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, in a lot of like, uh, uh, jurisdictions, like Bitcoin is vanilla now. Like a lot of like their guidance is like crypto related. And indeed, when I told you like there was 120 million, uh, like, uh, Bitcoin owners, uh, there's like 200 million overall crypto owners and like of those like 200 million like there's like 25 that do not own any bitcoin they are 100 percent pure shit coin yeah. <laughs> what a nightmare uh, so uh, so yeah it's uh like uh yeah not a good look like there are people that are like uh but yeah like uh you know like i suppose you have to learn eventually and uh yeah, if if uh, shit coins are like deemed like securities, uh, yeah, I'd say maybe like there's six or seven that like uh, escape the securities tag. Yeah, the rest, mm-hmm. uh, the rest will be securities. Uh-huh. So like, I think that's going to be like a like extremely bullish for Bitcoin because once you have regulatory clarity on what is and what isn't. Oh, you can start investing and people will stop bothering you. Like buy me some Cardano <laughs> because if Cardano has to become a security, it will become oh. worth uh, half a cent. Yeah. Like if it actually has to register as a security, Cardano will be worth maybe negative. You might have to pay someone to take your <laughs> Cardano off you. Which we already have actually you know, yeah. on, a, on a fiat, uh, uh, in a fiat system. So, um, as, uh, I want to just uh, uh, take have your take on like your thoughts on Bitcoin mining, home Bitcoin mining, like uh, because there's obviously you know compass mining and and there's upstream data working sort of a whole mobile unit, which is I think the uh, the the vision of Stephen Barbour. You know he says uh, you know the founder of upstream data. He's like I think he's working on a sort of a you know soundproof a box with a home mining. Um, equipment in it you know with s19 or whatever it is um do you see this uh, do you see this like as a as a something a bullish scenario like people mining their own uh with with you know with the right of course with the right incentives and the, and the right uh electricity prices um where do you see that yeah, I, yeah i'd say uh like uh, if you can get access to like uh i'd say eight cent us like per kilowatt hour uh you know mining at home uh, like uh like could be worth it for you so it all depends on like uh on uh, you know a big part is like you know intention and like just like why you want to do it so like i'd i'd so for example i asked you why would you want to mine at home for you know uh, obtaining uh, non KYC, you know, non KYC, right, very and, and very contributing somehow to the network to the security. So, in terms of like network, like security con- contribution, it's a funny one because you know how like some people say, "I'm not going to vote. I'm only one vote. My vote doesn't count." Uh-huh. It's kind of like that with home mining, right? If it was only home mining and there was 10 million home miners, like one person leaving doesn't matter. If everyone decides to leave, it like. It's over. <laughs> yeah. So you're not doing anything like meaningful, like for security, but you are providing work uh, to the security. But like uh, the, the the correct answer is KYC free coin. Exactly. Yeah. For KYC. So that already, so that already automatically, unfortunately, rules out Compass. 
uh, if your intent is KYC free coin, mm -hmm. right? If your intent is like to help the industry and contribute to hash, like you're crazy to not look at Compass actually, not shilling for Compass, do not work for Compass. Uh, but they've got like 6.3 cent electricity rate. Yeah, that's the most competitive price. And right? uh, they're selling an S9 for about eight grand, which is like not the best price on the market, but certainly not the worst price on the market. Like it's a good price for like a S19. Uh, uh, but again, like uh, like you have to get six S19s and they're eight grand each. Oh shit! Yeah. So like it's 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 it's, it's so like that's. Like for some people, yeah, that's a, that's a Bitcoin, yeah, yeah, to get going, and yeah. you know it might my six nineteens over my three year deployment should get me one point one KYC free, which is which is as good as like one point four KYC or whatever your marginal tax rate is. Okay, for capital gains KYC coin. So in Australia, for example, let's say I have. Uh, 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 one Bitcoin bought today at uh, fifty thousand US, and uh, in uh, in uh, two years' time, uh, it would jump to five hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So I've made uh, four hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars uh, profit on that Bitcoin. Uh, in Austria, I'd get to keep all of that money. In Australia, we're not as lucky, <laughs> but in Australia. We get to keep half of it. Jesus. So half goes into the bank, uh -huh. and half goes on to our salary. Now, whatever our marginal rate in our salary is, uh, that's what the rate on the Bitcoin is. So the top marginal rate in Australia is forty-four, or probably closer to uh, effectively like uh, forty-seven percent with all of like the additional like uh, levies. So your effective tax rate on Bitcoin, if you've held for longer than a year, is 23 or 24%. Call it a quarter, 25%. So my one KYC Bitcoin is basically worth as much, or sorry, my uh, uh, after tax, my one KYC Bitcoin is worth 0 0.75 Bitcoin effectively. So your KYC coin is at least 25% value, more valuable. In Austria, your KYC coin is doesn't make a difference in terms of your wealth uh, because if you as long as you've held it for more than a year the government doesn't care exactly. there's no your kyc anything. problem no speculation tax nice. and uh, and here's the most here's the controversy about to come up and like uh and this is an extremely unpopular opinion controversial opinion but i'll say it like uh like to the death like your kyc worry isn't the government your KYC worry is the people that are screaming loudly telling you to worry about KYC mm -hmm. uh, because they know how they can get to you. They just choose not to. And we're lucky to have these people building on our side. And for every one of these people, mm -hmm. uh, there's 20 other shadowy super coders uh, waiting to kidnap you because you didn't keep your privacy well on Bitcoin. Yeah. This is really concerning, yeah. So that's the concern. So never fear government. Government can't do shit. Like, they're not competent at all. Like, mm -hmm. don't worry. Like, uh, if you've bought, like, you know, don't worry from the government about KYC. Like, I say that flippantly. You should always worry about the government, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But the main danger to your life for poor OPSEC is not the government. It is the crypt the Bitcoin security experts that aren't on our side helping us like with their products. Right. But I don't mean like the samurai people of the world, but I, I mean the people with the same capabilities as the samurai boys that aren't choosing to work uh, for the good of the people. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So like uh, the samurai guys, with all due respect to them, they're probably not unique in their talent and knowledge of programming and security. There'll be heaps of people like them. Mm -hmm. How many good guys out there do you reckon are going to be on our side? So I'm more worried about uh, about them, and uh, and another reason I don't worry about them too much because if they're so shadowy and super codery, why haven't we seen any uh, videos of politicians masturbating on webcam? Why is it only Bitcoiners that have their seeds spied on by camera? 
where are these guys doing God's work, exposing the dirty crimes of the politicians? So, uh, so I'd say just don't wor like uh, worry about you know your KYC and privacy, uh, but like uh, like uh, make sure you're listening to the appropriate warnings. If you're going to do the KYC exercise, it's to protect yourself from other people. Yeah. Uh, the the government maybe. But if you go through like your good mixing regime and all of that kind of yeah. stuff, like government's got like no chance. Mm -hmm. uh, but the but the dark sector has the best brains in the world, and Bitcoin is valuable, and they're going to be looking for it. Yeah, and you know uh, it's, so it's 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 really shocking to see people. You know, I mean, whether it was Ledger or all these leaks. Uh, that have been going on the the you know all the all the all the data that's been that's been exposed and leaked would it be with Binance or uh, uh, people happen you know uh, beaten up and and kidnapped and and extorted and and you know physically massively harmed uh, so uh, this is uh, you know this is this is what KYC does you know um, and centralized the data centers well, yeah it's it's a hundred percent definitely a fear. Uh, but I, I think the 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 fear that's uh, uh, government is a fear that's extremely it's a risk that's extremely overestimated, and everyone else like is a risk that's extremely underestimated. It's it's like uh, like it's a risk you can't even start to quantify and comprehend how many people on Earth are capable of hacking KYC data off an exchange. And how likely is it to happen? Yeah. If you think about it in those terms, the likelihood of it happening is 100%. You can't get higher than that. It is a 100% likelihood. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, like, uh, So yeah, fear the government for other things, I'd say. Your Bitcoin is safe. Yeah, uh, so they're... long as it's in your own hands, yeah. uh, you your Bitcoin price, is safe. Bitcoin mixing and... Uh, yeah. Uh, so don't worry about the the government about your bitcoins, but worry and worry seriously mm -hmm. uh, about privacy and you know and others. Okay, makes all the sense. Yeah. So um, has uh, I don't want to take up too much time. Of, uh, um, let's uh, recap or or no. Let me let me let me ask something. Let's zoom out a little bit. So again, do you see the the globalists? Uh, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> I think Kathan Kathan Austin Fitz calls them calls them Mr. Global. Whether it be the WF Klaus Schwab people, the, the multi military industrial intelligence complex with the corporations and the governments, do you think that they will try to pull off something like another false flag, something whatever, a cyber panopticon bullshit, uh, alien false flag invasion? <laughs> I mean, what, 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 what do you see on the horizon? I mean, you know, because yeah. we're talking about the military industrial central banking complex, which, which, I mean, it's all about obsession of control, you know, and, and manipulation. So they're not just going to let go. This is my concern. So where do you see this going? So, uh, you know, all you got to do is, is replace the, the S in Klaus uh, with an N, clown, uh, clown Schwab, clown world. Uh, uh, like uh, you know, it's hard. Like it's hard to make a prediction about these. Like the the like uh, the thing is, everything in life goes back to like the story and the narrative. And like uh, and at the moment, the globalists uh, have have uh, have control, you know, of the narrative. And uh, you know, they 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 sort of. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know why people see it, you know, as a, as a good story, but they seem, seem to have like the, the best story, like, uh, uh, you know, to tell at the moment. And it's, uh, it's hard to understand why, uh, uh, but like, uh, you know, it, uh, if there wasn't so much, you know, information asymmetry and more people knew the Bitcoin story. Uh, we wouldn't uh, have the chance to buy at fifty thousand a coin, then, would we? Uh, you know, when everyone knows the story, then you might be able to say, "Yeah, I probably missed Bitcoin," <laughs> but we're probably uh, still uh, still uh, uh, page one into a thousand-page novel. 
Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So Hes, um, do you do you have any upcoming articles? Um, are you working on something? And we will uh, see you in Austria. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, uh, uh, like uh, I will uh, hope to be in Austria, like uh, you know, soon. Maybe, uh, uh, like maybe when it's not freezing, so we don't get our freedom back till December. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll come through in like uh, April, April May. So spring awesome. when uh, I, I, I hear the Austrian hills are beautiful after just after Wait. snow melt. Just I'll try. I'll, I'll, I'll try to get some uh, snow caps, so maybe I'll have to come in March. Yeah, March. Well, I, actually, April, May, 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 June is already like begin. You know, the end of uh, spring or beginning of summer, or something like that. So that would be like the perfect timing. I mean, it's still yeah. warmer, you know. But so, uh, but yeah, for now, uh, like, uh, 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 yeah, still, uh, still writing uh, articles uh, at uh, Bitcoin Magazine. Got an article. Uh, uh, should uh, I'm a I'm a I'm a regular there, so I should get frequent articles. I recently wrote an article uh, uh, about uh, uh, El Salvador, like uh, the uh, volcano mining in El Salvador, and uh, you know the guys wanted a draft. I think by like uh, you know September, like the the fifth or something, like ages ago, uh, like you know to put in the print magazine in two weeks. Yeah. And uh, thanks to President uh, Bukele. Yeah, it probably chuck that article in the garbage now. It's all out of date. Like they've actually started mining. Yeah. So Look. maybe I'll have to tell the guys, like, I'm going to have to rewrite a couple of paragraphs. It looks yeah. silly. It's already out of date. That's, that's, the, that's the torturous thing about trying to write, like, about Bitcoin. Things just change too quickly. Yeah. So that like if, you're working, if you're working on a draft that spans, like, a week worth of work for you, and you're making a comment about the price, like you're going to have to change uh, everything. So, uh, so yeah, volatility is good. I like it. Love it. Yeah, yeah I'm really looking forward to that, uh, you know, to the uh, volcanization of Bitcoin mining in, in El Salvador. This is going to be a huge, like, like, like precedented case, you know, for, for this all, for this whole energy fund. You know, because it's it's you know otherwise it's wasted energy. You know, it's 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 energy that's there, uh, abundant, and you know, and they can just easily use it. could very easily power all of El Salvador. Exactly. Yeah, it's only a small country, but could probably very easily power El Salvador plus uh, excess for export. So, and I think uh, uh, it's not the cheapest in the world because it does require like drilling and getting lucky. Uh, but like if you have a volcano like you don't miss like drill anywhere and it's going to work for you it's pretty hot okay. <laughs> so for them uh and like anyone like uh, so it's not available to everyone in the world mm -hmm. you've got to have like volcanoes but like uh there are quite a lot of countries that have quite a lot of volcanoes like a uh, ring of fire pacific rim yeah. like uh, malaysia and indonesia have heaps of geothermal Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I'd uh, I'd see that as a growth industry for El Salvador. Like there's there's no industry more important than energy, and the energy industry is just a subset of the Bitcoin industry. Yeah, no, really, really exciting, really exciting. Um, so has yeah, um, let let people know where where people can find you, your articles, um, anything yeah, else. So people people what? can find me on Twitter uh, at. Friar Hass, F R I A R H A S S, and you can also catch me on uh, BitcoinMagazine.com. Uh, uh, I think uh, you just uh, type in, uh, uh, like, uh, you can just type my name in the search, and that'll take you to my author uh, author page. Uh, and uh, and yeah, we'll we'll see you guys uh, all there. All right, pleasure talking to you, Hass, and hope I really hope to see you by next year in Austria. On top of the mountains over here. Okay. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'll uh, I'll have my full knee-high socks on and suspenders. I'll get my little uh, little hat. Should yeah. Be good. Yeah. Let's smoke some cigars and drink some yeah. scotch malt. Yeah. And... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right then. Yes. Have a good day. Okay. Talk you to you too. soon. Take care. Catch up. See ya. Yeah. Bye.